Welcome to another hot and fresh straight out the shower video on YouTube. We're doing something a little bit different today. Do I, do I look fresh? I feel, I feel, I feel like I cut myself when I shaved my face, really. Someone on a stream the other day asked me why I don't like mechanical engineering, and that prompted me to have proper PTSD as to why I quickly left that job. But upon thinking about that further, I was like, you know what? Um, maybe we can take a look at the most useless classes that I took while I was at college. And if you don't know, let me give you a little background real quick. 12 seconds later. Essentially. So I have experience from the US and in Finland. In Finland, there's no tuition. In the US, you have to sell your soul. This is the degree that I have. You can see, probably can't even read that and wonder why that word is so long, but it says certificate, degree certificate. Let's open it up. So here's the actual bachelor's of engineering. Maybe. Yeah, Bachelor of Engineering, Mechanical Engineering. Here are the actual transcripts from my graduation. So I thought we'd go through and, and, and look at some of these classes that I took and, and talk about the expectations and re reality of, of each one. The most useless classes just straight up front are the ones here I took in the United States. If you don't know, if you're not from the US, then in the United States, we have courses called general education courses. And this typically means two years of bullshit spend the first half of your college redoing stuff that you've already taken in high school before you get to the stuff that's actually relevant to your degree. And in Europe and a lot of the other parts of the world, you don't have to do that. You just go straight to the degree. Um, while, I was in, while I was here in the US, I started doing the general education courses and then I transferred to Finland. So I completed my general education courses, transferred to Finland. I was like, oh, let me bring all these courses over from the US, just transfer them over. And they're like, uh... Why do you have fitness walking as a course? Why did they give you a college credit for fitness walking? Okay, what about art history? Yeah, I actually took, I actually took art history. Um, Jackson Pollock AMA, Vincent Van Gogh AMA. It's actually a pretty cool course. I mean, the course itself was eh, but I mean, there was a lot of cool liberal arts girls in there. 10 out of 10 if I had to rank it like that. But back to the mechanical engineering, let's take a look at some of the courses that I have here. Um, I had to take intro to general psychology. So learning how to be a decent human being. That was, I, I never used that on the job. Concepts of fitness and health, learning, learning that you have a pulse and that in, you, you can in fact up that pulse if you do something physical uh, besides Besides playing WoW all day, I'm, I'm looking at you, Josh. If I could go back in time to when I was 18, I, uh, man, I would just punch myself so hard and be like, get up, go outside and do something. Let's talk about some of the courses that I do use. So we have this thing called Programming Logic Controllers. That's basically used for automation, hardware automation, conveyor belts, pneumatics, little arms that extend out and, and pull back, little vacuums that, that grab something and then move it and then the, the air pressure lets go and then it drops. So automation, stuff like that, PLC programming. Robotics was super cool. We had to automate a, a six axis robot arm to uh, sort and categorize different hockey pucks because, because Finland. These are the maths that I had to take. Mathematical tools, engineering, mathematics, physics, calculus one, calculus two, college algebra, and that's what, like, the pure mathematics that I took in. So there, there's no calculus three and diff EQ. Those are all just blended together in what's called engineering mathematics and mathematical tools. So applied versions of what you would learn at a university here in the United States without that official title. I had to take a bunch of Finnish language. Finnish one, two, three, but I was married to a Finnish chick. So that was pretty easy for me. I took German language and culture, but I'm pretty sure I learned more German from Saving Private Ryan in that class. Elementary Spanish, uh, I learned more Spanish playing PUBG Mobile uh, than that class. Uh, technical documentation. This is actually written really, really helpful for me. Writing, the ability to write technical documentation, not because, I don't know, doing like diagrams or writing how-tos or descriptions of how to like put together parts, but more keeping your written word concise, keeping it clear, keeping it to the point. Materials, that's kind of cool, although uh, you, when you had the job of a mechanical engineer, you just kind of follow by the book of what the machine you're using is. So the machines that you use on the job, typically, at least for my mechanical engineering job, uh, the machines were third party. So the third party took care of all the materials and, and all that. We just wanted to use it for application. Strength of materials one and two, it really questioned my ability to, to reason in logic. Because uh, I failed that course three times. Three times? How do you fail a course three times? Well, let me tell you, because I'm an expert in that, apparently. I failed it once, and I was like, oh, I'll just redo it. Failed it again, and then I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta really get my stuff together. Uh, and I was like, all right, I got it this time. And I failed it again. And I was like, okay, so fourth time is the charm for me. Um, dynamics, there's a lot of dynamics, a lot of moving parts, calculating the physics of moving parts, essentially what that course was. Mechanical drawings in CAD. So this was always really cool. I always liked 3D modeling just because I liked, I was always kind of interested in game dev. Um, 
So it's always really cool to like put together these little machines that they would give us for the class. They'd be like, hey, here's this swinging arm thing, please build it and then make it simulate. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. That actually didn't come in handy at all on the job though. I never did any 3D modeling, never did it, any 3D design. I know there are a lot of 3D modeling jobs for mechanical engineering, but Mine was the 3D PowerPoint presentation, the 3D Word doc. Can you tell that I'm a little bit, can you, can you tell that I'm a little bit salty about my job? Project related to mechanical engineering, thermodynamics of renewable energies. Thermodynamics of renewable energies. So not only is it thermodynamics, it's thermodynamics of windmills, thermodynamics of uh, solar panels, thermodynamics of hydro plants. Thermodynamics is already notorious for making you question your life choices as to why you wanted to do engineering. That, that course didn't come in handy and also that course gave me PTSD. Manufacturing process, that was actually kind of neat. I actually, this one was probably one of the courses that I used, manufacturing processes, learning the different stages of manufacturing. We actually had to go and like hand mill things, we had to bore, ream, oh my god, I'm gonna get demonetized for saying that. I just can't say ream without thinking of the hub. Building was pretty cool, learned how not to, to, to strike the arc with your finger. Process optimization with RFID. RFID was actually really cool. We, this was actually a summer class. It was like a month long. Final project of that course was using uh, hockey sticks and tracking hockey sticks throughout a manufacturing process by implanting the RFID chips into the hockey sticks so that we could track um, who hit the puck when because the puck would have an RFID chip, chip in it and so we'd hit the puck and then um, the RFID chips would read through NFC and then we'd be able to track who hit the puck in the player's performance even better, I guess? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It was actually a pretty cool course. Again, hockey pucks because, because Finland. I'd really like to go back to Finland one of these days now that I'm not a, like such a broke college student and, and go experience Finland for what it is. You know, Finland's really expensive. I think right now it's 24, 25% VAT tax. VAT tax is value added tax. That means you pay a fat, a fat fee. I mean, it is a fat fee. A flat fee of 25% extra on whatever essentially personal selling and customer service uh this was actually that was actually completely useless didn't teach me how to sell anything it taught me uh, how to look at a powerpoint and stand in front of a class of a uh, hundred people and read off my powerpoint and try not to be a nervous wreck i've been working on public speaking and charisma and i hope that it shines through in this video where i'm not so I don't know, in my head about it, I guess. Orientation studies, this is pretty typical for any college. This was the one thing that they had in both places, orientation studies. Usually you have an orientation class where you learn about what the degree is, which a quick Google could do, but you know, universities and a lot. I learned a lot, okay? Data transfer technology, I don't even remember that. 3D virtual models and animations, that was actually pretty cool. People are building like a new mall and there's like this big billboard out there and you can see like, uh, there's like this little animation of these people like walking through the brand new buildings and like the doors open up and the camera flies through. And we learned how to make one of those. I mean, the software was antiquated. I could probably do it with Unreal Engine a lot easier with just putting a camera on rails. And we had project work, project B, project C. Um, projects, these, these classes were actually pretty hard. This was hardware related. We learned how to work with people that were difficult to work with. I'm sure you guys have all experienced that when you do 90% of the work and the other person has 10% and you're just already upset about that. And then on top of the 10%, he doesn't even turn that in. As far as the project, it was actually a lot of hardware related stuff. We had to take these little miniature hockey pucks, Finland. Uh, we had to use these little lasers and we had to program these lasers to detect whether the hockey puck was white, black, or red. And that was kind of a neat process of understanding physics and how different colors absorb the light differently and how you can set the laser to detect the refraction ratio, I guess. I forget the exact word, but that was actually a pretty cool project. So yeah, this video is just, it's just a little bit different. Um, I've been making code related videos for a while now, but I have a mechanical engineering degree and someone, someone, someone sparked that little like, why don't you like it? Well, um, I just don't have a whole lot of useful stuff, just a whole lot of practical stuff from this degree. I think it depends on the job, but the job that I got was just definitely not for me. And the only things that piqued my interest were 3D modeling, 3D design, and the programming sections of it, of, uh, and robotics, right? So hardware automation. The rest of it, eh. Uh, I'm glad that I finished it. Would I do it again? Probably not. Do I think that this has actually helped me get a, get a job uh, in software? Actually, I think it's actually done a detriment to me because they look at my resume and they see that I, it's from Finland and they're like, oh, this guy must be from Finland and he needs a visa. And so they just like, this is a rug and this is, this is my resume, right? They just, they just put it under the rug. That's a terrible analogy, but I don't think it's done me a whole lot of good.
they do always ask me about it. The companies that do take me to the next interview step, they've always asked me about it. And they're like, well, what's this up with engineering? I fell in love with the girl. You know how that story goes? Like, I literally say those words. Like, and they all smile because I've like figured out a way to make that story look amazing. And they're all charmed by it. And they're like, oh, where is she now? And I'm like, yeah, she's in Finland and I'm here. Um, what's the next step of the interview? Hope that you liked this video. Hit that thumbs up if you did. Sm smash the thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Hit me with some ideas for new videos. Hit that little subscribe button. Click that little bell. Turn on those notifications. We have a Discord link if you wanna to talk to me about this. Discord link's in the description below. Shout out to all the patrons that support the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you ever consider supporting someone, you'll maybe consider me if this video was at least entertaining to you. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.